about your background and uh, I think you have an interesting story to tell us about your uh, studies, your undergraduate studies. Uh, well, Ahmed Mansour, uh, born and raised in Saudi Arabia. Uh, <laughs> the story. Okay, um, I first, first of all, all through high school, I thought that I always wanted to be a dentist. Mm -hmm. um, so after, uh, after a while and my graduation ceremony, uh, I was the mic coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, after the ceremony, the feedback I got was just marvelous. People started telling me that uh, I should pursue this as a career, to be a front man, to actually present events and all. Mm -hmm. So um, later on, um, to apply in, in universities here in Egypt, I, uh, uh, I wrote uh, dentistry and then pharmacy. I got pharmacy mm -hmm. in Minya, Minya University. Right. Um, later, after a year, I decided that uh, I just, <laughs> I'm not that good at chemistry. So um, I really applied um, at the Cairo University mm -hmm. in mass communication and I got accepted. So. So you moved from uh, the. <clears throat> so you moved from being a pharmacist to uh, being a journalist. Yes, exactly. You changed uh, your career totally. Yes, exactly. How do you think we can uh, direct our uh, students from the beginning to the right choice? Uh, it's all about their interests. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the thing that they're really good at, and they actually go pursue it. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to know that uh, just from your school subjects. If you're really good at math, you should, uh, should apply to engineering. Mm -hmm. If you're really good at biology, you just apply to dentistry, medicine, or pharmacy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was good at writing, mm -hmm. so I thought it would be nice to actually go be a journalist. Mm -hmm. So uh, why specifically media and why journalism? Because it's the future. Everyone has a craving to actually know and have the knowledge of what's going on in the world, or in the Middle East, or in Egypt to be specific. So uh, I thought it was uh, a great uh, choice because everything will evolve ar around the television and the internet really mm -hmm. soon. Right. Um, after graduation, where, uh, how were you directed? Uh, how did you start your career life? And uh, I mean, uh, how did you benefit from each step you went through? Um, it's all about self-mentoring. Uh, you don't have to actually be uh, dependent on other people to give you information you need to actually make it in your career. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I did is that I read, I uh, asked people, I gained the experience of the people who are there already. They told me, how, they directed me, they told me what's the right way to go. Plus my parents, of course, they are the people with a huge influence upon me. Right. Uh, how about journalism? How do you see journalism in Egypt? How do you see its development throughout the years? Uh, I mean, not only before and after the 25, uh, January 25 revolution, but throughout the years. Um, it all has to do with the web. The web now is dominating mm -hmm. everything, social media and all. Um, what's happening right now, what's taking place in Egypt, to be specific, mm -hmm. is that everyone, uh, no one actually cares about the print anymore. Mm -hmm. They go get their news from applications on the tablets, on the iPhone, or uh, through the, a website on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's evolving really and um, Egypt is keeping up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we would like to tell our audience from your opinion how experience what's the difference, exact difference between an editor, a journalist, and a reporter? Uh, well, actually, a reporter is the person that goes down to the site and uh, with a cameraman or with a telephone that reports back to the studio, gives information. Uh, a journalist does exactly what the, what the reporter does, but in addition, he just goes back and writes it. Uh, an editor is a person who proofreads the work of the journalist and the reporter, mm -hmm. makes sure that everything is credible, everything is right, and uh, that's mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's really common nowadays that, uh, in Egypt especially, that uh, um, all types of people can write articles uh, and uh, can work as presenters and uh, all that sort of thing. Uh, how do you see this and do you think this is professional? Is, is it common uh, outside Egypt? Yeah, outside Egypt is very common. Uh, for example, The Guardian has a whole column in their newspaper for, uh, for amateur writers. 
-hmm. For example, I'm really good at writing something or I have something beneficial to give to the people. This mm -hmm. is my personal experience, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, they give them a chance to actually send the article and they publish it for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have necessarily be a professional writer to do that. And it's a really good idea, I think, mm -hmm. because um, some people are less fortunate, for example. Uh, they get the chance to write about something uh, and be published in a huge newspaper like uh, The mm -hmm. Guardian, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, with uh, the social media evolving and even dominating, uh, do you think that uh, journalism in its common form is really facing a hard time? Uh, yeah, journalism is facing a hard time. Uh, but to be more specific, print journalism is having a hard time. Mm -hmm. um, nobody reads anymore from a newspaper except for the people who got used to reading in a newspaper. My father, for example, listens to, reads a newspaper. And uh, I do know certain people that still rely on the radio, for example, to, to get the, 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 the news. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it is evolving big time. And uh, I think that the, the stream that we're going to is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, does written media stand a chance in this competition? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. As I previously told you, I think no. Uh, written media is, um, if you mean like on web or newspaper and I print. I mean newspaper. No, I don't think they do. Mm -hmm. They don't stand a chance. All the youth, they rely on websites and electronics to mm -hmm. get their news. Mm -hmm. For example, there's an application called Feedly. On, uh, and, uh, it's by Google. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I use it to get all the information I need. I don't rely on newspapers or TV. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want to read, I read from a website that is actually uh, specialized in writing articles mm -hmm. on the web. Mm -hmm. uh, as we see that uh, people are more and more watching TV and uh, you know uh, talk shows and this kind also this sort of thing and people do not read really now how can we develop this uh, reading habit I mean it's it's very important to develop a character of a child to let him read not only depend on watching uh, talk shows or, or uh, even going on the social media? Um, in my personal opinion, I don't think it really matters if you read or you watch it as long as you're being informed. Mm -hmm. If you're an informative person uh, via television or via newspapers, it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. as long as you're informed. Mm -hmm. um, as, as for the children, I think they're, they're like clay. You can actually manifest them or like structure them any way you like. Mm -hmm. So um, reading is a habit here in the Middle East to be specific. I don't think it's, uh, it's really that evolved, uh, mm -hmm. unlike uh, Europe or the Westerns. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a habit that everyone needs to learn. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think that uh, it's a big issue regarding the matter. I think what matters most is to be informed and actually gain the experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, how can written media, media survive or have a comeback? Written media. Uh, I mean like print also. Print, yeah. Um, no, I don't think they evolve. It's like trying to convince me that black and white news uh, televisions are coming back. We have LED nows and HDs. Black and white televisions are no more. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, we can't just go back and print media. We just need to step forward. Mm -hmm. uh, just like all the major agencies or the news agencies in the world, they're now heading to, uh, to web to mm -hmm. give their news, to write their articles. Right. Uh, would you tell me about the most important projects or articles that you uh, uh, made and you're proud of and you would like to tell us about? Um, actually, there's one project that I'm working on. Uh, I worked on with uh, the magazine I'm working in right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's about uh, the abuse of uh, drugs in shabby weddings right. and uh, the relation between drugs and shabby uh, and shabby music. So uh, what happens? It, uh, what happened was. Um, that I had to go down to a shabby wedding with mm -hmm. a video camera. Mm -hmm. I started taking shoots of people drinking and doing drugs. Right. Uh, it was really terrifying because in case I got caught and they knew that I'm actually taking those pictures mm -hmm. for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, 
it would, I would have been in great trouble, but it's, it was a really... So, uh, did you find out what's the relation between Shami music and uh, drugs? Uh, yes, it's because it's just like the relationship between rap, mm -hmm. the American rap, mm -hmm. and drugs. It's like those are the kind of music that target the less fortunate people of Egypt. Right. Uh, so, in the less fortunate people of Egypt, uh, it's, it's the problem. They do have prob uh, dr uh, drugs problems. Uh, most of them take drugs not because of the, the popular education or popular uh, mm -hmm. social uh, life. Mm -hmm. So that was majorly the, the mm -hmm. link between them two. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who would like to uh, write but who doesn't have the chance uh, or who doesn't know where to start or how to start? He wants to be a journalist or he wants to express himself in writing. Um, reading. Mm -hmm. Reading will help you how to write. Mm -hmm. And actually reading not to gain the information only, but to know how they gave the information, mm -hmm. the way, the, the complex of words, mm -hmm. uh, the combination of words. Uh, so this is what, what I was just trying to, to say, that reading is very important. I mean, we cannot only watch TV and talk shows. What develops a character, uh, develops a writer or a journalist is reading. Yes, reading about the topic, I mean. Mm -hmm. Uh, reading, uh, gaining information, any source of information. You can actually watch YouTube videos to gain mm -hmm. information about how to write. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually, um, I mean like reading, there is a book for example, after two years of experience I read, mm -hmm. uh, it was called uh, Writing for Dummies, Journalism for Dummies. Mm -hmm. uh, after two years of experience, I still thought the book was very, very informative. It gave mm -hmm. me lots of information that I need to actually pursue my career a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And where to start? Where? Where to write at the beginning? Uh, there's always the, the university or the, the faculty newspaper uh, that you write there for free. They actually publish your articles. There are a lot of websites that would actually take interns. Uh, for example, the place where I work, they take interns. They train them. They give them a certificate. They tell them that uh, they give them all that they need. And mm -hmm. then afterwards, they go actually pursue it. They, they teach you everything about journalism. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there is still a code of ethics for journalism that anyone cares about keeping and preserving? Uh, nowadays, mm -hmm. I think, uh, of course, yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. uh, but mainly, uh, people are actually trying to pursue a certain thing, but it's not really there. Uh, given the consequences or the structure in the in the world today, most journalists they're writing what people need to hear, but not really what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, that's my own humble opinion. I think mm -hmm. um, what is happening right now, the code of ethics, it's really a necessity to not follow the code of ethics. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there is a thin line between responsible and respectable free journalism and yellow uh, journalism, of course, uh, who use freedom and democracy in the worst way, uh, transmitting lies and sometimes false news. How can we stop that without affecting free journalism? Um, here in Egypt, I mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. that uh, what's happening, that it's a necessity as well. Mm -hmm. People are not less educated like they used to be. Now they're well informed of what's going on in the country. Mm -hmm. So I just can't lie to them simply. What can happen is that I tell them that uh, you can actually pursue it in this way, or pursue mm -hmm. it in this way, and this, this is the news. Do you believe it or not? Mm -hmm. Of course they won't. So I don't think it's a really big matter because they are a necessity. Mm -hmm. uh, giving false news sometimes is helpful. Uh, you, if you mean about the, the kind of... Uh, what do you mean by is sometimes helpful? Uh, it's sometimes helpful by telling the people in, in, in now in Egypt we need stability. Stability is very essential. Mm -hmm. uh, fabricating, I think that fabricating, not fabricating, mm -hmm. not overwhelming mm -hmm. the news is very important. Mm -hmm. Because uh, how can I actually convince you that everything is going fine, giving the good news and trying to give them back uh, the, uh, putting ba uh, back the bad is sometimes mm -hmm. very helpful for the people and their emotions. Like we feel that there is progress in the country. Mm -hmm. How were you as a person affected by the revolution? Um, it made me take care a little bit more of the, po uh, the, 
political world mm -hmm. in Egypt. Uh, after the revolution, I thought I was kind of, I was still in university. I was like caught up in university, so I wouldn't think about much in politics. Mm -hmm. But um, when, it when it comes to the time that I actually think about it, uh, no, it gave me a lot of experience. I just knew a lot about the Egyptian people. Mm -hmm. I knew about a lot of politicians in Egypt. I had to read about Anwar Sadat and Gamal Abdel Nasser to actually understand everything that had to go down with them and how they managed to solve certain problems that they faced. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, the revolution is uh, the reason why I am the person I am right now. The, the, the January 25 revolution? Yes, of You're course. You're talking about that? Yeah. Right. Uh, so, um, are you specialized in political uh, uh, writing or you write in any, I mean, you can write about uh, social uh, aspects, you can write about uh, medical aspects. I mean, are you specialized or you just uh, majorly, I'm specialized into politics, mm -hmm. but uh, since that uh, I'm the only full-time writer in the magazine, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I tend to write other articles as well, mm -hmm. uh, social, about music, about, um, for example, I wrote about Az al mm -hmm. uh, who was the first uh, lieutenant in Egypt mm -hmm. uh, as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote about her, I had to interview her and talk to her and all that. Mm -hmm. So I write about uh, mainly anything, but uh, majorly politics. Majorly politics. Uh, how do you see the difference between journalism in Egypt and journalism abroad? Uh, to be honest, I think there is more freedom of speech there than here. Mm -hmm. uh, even though that's what, uh, that is what appears, but if you actually went deep into it, they do have some restrictions as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the thing is that it's more like... Uh, majorly common there than here mm -hmm. is that they can actually write about anything anytime. Mm -hmm. uh, when a journalist graduates the university there, he, he is provided with a contact list that he would need throughout his career. Mm -hmm. uh, people who work at the government, at the parliament, or uh, uh, all the people you can imagine. Here we have to start from scratch and that's the difference between here and there. They have lots of things to fas facilitate the process of the work. Mm -hmm. But here, no, we don't have that. Right. Uh, if you compare um, journalism in Egypt before and after the revolution, how do you see the difference? Of course, uh, before the revolution, no one could actually write anything. Now there is democracy. But they were privately owned. Uh, I mean, they were uh, TV channels uh, and... Uh, also, there were restrictions on the privately owned newspapers. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, uh, to, to, to begin with, or to just to give an example, um, the owners of those newspapers and those TV channels, they have restrictions on their employees. Mm -hmm. They have to follow. Right. Uh, just like anything else. But now I think it's decreased. Everyone can say what they want to say. The media is better than before, obviously. So you think there is more freedom? In of press, uh, yeah, freedom, of uh, even uh, on TV. Yeah, of course. Right. Before we go uh, into further details and talking about uh, state-owned media and privately-owned media, we'll go for a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, and uh, I would like to welcome once again my guest, Ahmed Mansour, journalist. Thank you, uh, Ahmed, for joining us. Ahmed, uh, would you tell me about uh, uh, your opinion about uh, privately owned and state owned media in Egypt? Uh, the privately owned and the, uh, the privately owned are the main competitor to the state owned. Uh, a state has to actually say anything that the government permits. Uh, the government has an opinion about a certain thing that is they're going to use their media to actually send it out to the people. Mm -hmm. But privately owned, uh, they're more, they do concentrate more to be the anti-government 
or not the anti-government, I wouldn't go as far as saying that. I would say the, the critique of mm -hmm. the government's work. Mm -hmm. uh, if they did good, they're going to say they did good. If they did bad, they're going to say they did bad. Mm -hmm. um, so a criticizer... So you, you think they have more freedom? Uh, not more freedom. Uh, the, the government uses the public-owned uh, newspapers and magazines to actually send their message to the people. The government, uh, the private sector, what they do is that they criticize it or they compliment it. Mm -hmm. uh, what they have to do is that they actually analyze the government's work. It's a different thing. The government's media is like a way to reach the people, but uh, the private sector media is a way to actually talk to the people about the government's media, <laughs> about the government's decisions. Keeping an eye on it, like, like keeping an yes, eye on exactly, it. Yes, exactly, exactly. Right, uh, so Ahmad, what advice would you like to give to a new journalist who is just starting his career uh, uh, from your own experience, uh, how to overcome uh, obstacles at the beginning of that career, which is not an easy career, as you know? Yes, um, first of all, I would like to say it's uh, insist on your goal. All that you have to do. Here in Egypt, it's very, very tough to actually find a job that is related to your career and mm -hmm. uh, your dream job. Right. Insisting on your career, you have to start small to actually grow bigger. Starting small gave, gives you like tremendous experience. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I had to work for some time uh, in a newspaper, English newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, here in Egypt without pay. I used to go there and get information and come back. And I actually had to pay for this information uh, by transportation going and coming. Uh, it all came out of my allowance. I used to do that while I was un in university and a little bit after. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way, precision. Uh, when you are a, news, a, a, a journalist, uh, plagiarism is a no. Plagiarism mm -hmm. is something that will make you, make you lose your career. Um, in our career as a journalist, all you have is your name mm -hmm. and you need to keep it uh, shined and polished every day. Right, uh, Ahmad Mansour, uh, journalist, uh, thank you very much for joining us. You're most welcome, thank you for having me. Our dear viewers, thank you very much for being with us and stay tuned for more coming up here on Nile International.